Greetings to everyone. Today, we want to look at logarithms. And I am William Obinidente, Department of Mathematics, the University of Kumasi, Ghana. Let's look at the definition of a logarithm. A logarithm can be referred to as an exponent or a power or an index. A logarithm can be referred to as an exponent or a power or an index. And so when we look at this, we have A raised to the power C being equal to B, and we call this the indicial form. So A is the base, C is the power, and B is the number. And this is known as the indicial form. So for example, we can get three squared being equal to nine. And we say that the number two is the exponent or logarithm, that when the base is raised to that power, results in the value of nine. 3 squared being equal to 9, the number 2 is the exponent or logarithm that when the base 3 is raised to, that power results in the value of 9. So this in the form of an example. Now, we can convert this initial form into a logarithmic form. So you see that log b to base a will give us c, and that is the logarithmic form. So if you see that we can convert this to that, and vice versa. So log b to base a will give us c, and thus is the logarithmic form. So three squared being equal to nine can be written as log nine to base three being equal to two. So let's take note of that. Now we want to look at the laws of logarithms. Log x to base a plus log y to base a will give us log x times y to base a. So anytime we want to add the logs of the same base, we multiply their numbers. Log x to base a plus log y to base a will give us log xy to base a. It means that log xy to base a is x times y. We multiply the two numbers. And that is the first law of logarithms. The second one is about subtraction. When we are subtracting this log from that log, because they have the same base, their values will divide, so x over y. So log x over y to base a, and that is the second law of logarithms. The third law has it this way. If I have log x raised the power y to base a, then I bring the power in front, so I get y log x to base a, and that is the third law. So we use all this to solve questions. Now I want to look at what is known as the change of base. If I have log c to base a, I can change the base to a common value. You can say that log c to base b over log a to base b, a common base. Log c to base b over log a to base b. So let's look at that carefully. Now I want to solve this question. Find the positive value of x. That satisfies the equation log x to base two being equal to log x plus six to base four. So we start with our expression. Now I want to change this to a common base and change that to a common base. So all that we'll do is that we can decide that we'll leave this side and just change this to base two. We can do that. But we just want to explain. So we want to go through it this way. So we'll still come back to this because we are using two as a common base. So log x to base two over log two to base two. Then when we come here is log x plus six to base two over log four to base two. So get to this point. Now log two to base two will give us one because when we convert it to initial form, we shall get two being equal to two is a power one. So the whole of this log gives us one. And so that does it. Now when we come here, log four to base two, this four can be written as two squared. And they will bring the two in front from the third law of logarithms. And so that takes us here. We get two log two to base two. Now this will give us one, and this log two to base two give us one, so we get two. Then we multiply both sides by two. So this two move to this place because we are multiplying this side by two and that side by two. So that takes us to this point. We get two log x to base two being equal to log x plus six 
to base 2. Now, we still need to simplify this. We want to clear the log so that we can solve whatever equation that is left. So we'll go back to the third law and then bring the 2 over here so that the coefficient here will be 1 and that will be 1 and then we'll move on from there. So we get it this way. We get it this way. We get our value that way. So we'll be looking at what we have over here. So the two comes there. Now we have the log. Then we have the log, so we'll clear the log off. So like this one, we can find this to the log base two, we can find this to the log base two. That will take us back. But once the coefficient here is one, we can clear the logs. So we have x squared being equal to x plus six. Now I want to try and get all the values on one side. So we shall subtract x from the right-hand side and x from the left-hand side. So this x will be cleared and we we'll get negative x on the left-hand side. We'll then subtract six from the left-hand side and then six from the right-hand side. So this will be cleared and then we'll get the negative six on this side all being equal to zero. Now we have to factorize this quadratic equation. So we pick one x squared times minus six and then we'll get minus six x squared. Now we want two factors that will multiply to give us minus six x squared, but when we add them, we shall get minus one x and that will be negative three x plus two x. So when we multiply this and that, we shall get negative six x squared. When we add them, it will take us back to negative one x. So we put these two terms here, so I'll get four terms. Now pick them in pairs and do our factorization x squared minus 3x, x is common. So we divide this by x, we get x. So with our x out. And then we divide 3x by x, we get 3. So that will be in the bracket. So x times x takes us back to x squared. x times 3 takes us back to 3x. Now over here, we have 2 common here, and then 2 will be common there because we can divide through by that. So when we divide 2x by 2, we get x. And when we divide 6 by 2, we get 3. So in the bracket, we get that. Now, x minus 3, x minus 3 is a common factor or a common linear factor to both. So we can do the factorization. Then we'll get that here. And then we'll be left with x plus 2. So that will be in the bracket. Now, either this is equal to 0 or that is equal to 0. So we get x minus 3 being equal to 0, where x is equal to 3. Or x plus 2 being equal to 0, where x is equal to negative 2. But the question wanted the positive value. So we say that, therefore, x is equal to three. And so that's how we apply the laws of logarithms. So any question that you meet, you will see that the laws that we have treated can be used to solve those questions. Thank you for your attention and for joining me in this presentation. Bye.